Greetings to all today from Botswana. I ask that you might hear me patiently today as I discuss this issue of mediator. As we read from the scriptures, <clears throat> for there is one God and one mediator, be mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. That is 1 Timothy 2.5. We know also from John 14.6 that Jesus is the only way to God the Father, and from Acts 4.12 that, his is, that Jesus is the only name by which men must be saved. Everything else is, you know, not acceptable in God's eyes. But please listen to me patiently because Satan keeps trying to usurp the mediator role. He does it in various ways and you won't know that it's him. He's trying to deceive you. So please listen to me patiently. God has given us all that we need to serve him. We stand in the righteousness of Christ. We are saved by grace through faith and not of our works. He's given us everything that we need. He has given us his Holy Spirit. I'm going to go through some scriptures. And again, these scriptures will be in the description at the bottom. Uh, because, of course, in the video, I'll go quickly along. From Acts 2, 38 and 39. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the, for the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as as many as the Lord our God shall call. Praise his name. That definitely includes us today. We see also a key role of the, of the Spirit is to intercede for us in prayer. As I read these precious promises, this is from Romans chapter 8, verse 26, verses 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Another precious promise. God is giving us all that we need to serve him. Now I'm going to look at 1 John 2.27, another gift from the Holy Spirit. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as, as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. There it is telling us that God, the Holy Spirit, will be teaching us directly. We don't need that any man should teach us, and what he teaches us is true. It is good to get the advice of godly teachers here and there, but we can rest assured that God will teach us directly on his own. Not only this, then we read again, because God has given us his Holy Spirit, then his Spirit dwells in us, and we have become the temple of God. It's not because we ourselves are great. As we read, we have this, you know, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That's 2 Corinthians 4, 7. But listen to what the scripture will tell us. For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. That one is from 2 Corinthians 6.16. So we know that each one of us must give an account of ourselves to God. In other words, we're not going to be judged in groups. Each one of us will have to obey God on you know, his or her own. And uh, the scripture is, is very clear on this. I think everybody knows this. Uh, one such reference I have listed is Romans 14.12. It just simply says that each of us will have to give an account of himself before God. And so God has equipped us, hasn't he, with his Holy Spirit. He mediates. Remember from 1 John 2, I think it's 2, 2, that if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, who is Jesus. He will stand in the gap for us so that we may be forgiven of our sins. However, it was a long time ago, it was in the early 4th century, with the founding of the Catholic Church. And believe me, this video is not to specifically pick on that. But remember, of course, the Catholic Church is not Christian. 
I say that because, I mean, I know some call themselves that, but it was not founded on the Bible. It was founded on Baal worship. And so there are some vast differences between the core beliefs. And just simply, of course, Catholicism is a works-based salvation, whereas true Christianity is faith-based. And that, uh, that means everything to us. So the Catholic Church came along in the early 4th century, and all of a sudden, here is the Pope, which was Emperor Constantine, was the first Pope. And he is saying, I am the vicar of Christ on the earth. God said he would establish his church. The gates of hell would not prevail against it. We are the church. And now you must come to Jesus through us. Do you see what happened here? And this is exactly what the Pope would claim today, and that is that everyone that is trying to be saved must go through the Catholic Church first. In other words, they added themselves as a mediator between God and man. So now it is that the person has to go to Catholicism, and then the Catholic Church intercedes for Jesus, and then Jesus intercedes for the Father. And there are a whole bunch of uh, problems with this. But this is exactly what happened with the Protestant Reformation, because the Protestant Reformation broke this. People began to be studying the scriptures for themselves. Uh, new manuscripts were coming in from the Antioch region over in the Middle East, and they were seeing, we walk by faith. And this was a big problem for Catholicism because they wanted to dominate and control. And one of the things they always said is, unless you submit to us, you can't go to heaven. Of course, they also said, if you do submit to us, you can't know that you're going to heaven because that's a sin of presumption. So you, you definitely don't want to get hooked into uh, that phony hope. But so you see this, that the big turn, the big turn in the Protestant Reformation was understanding. I mean, this is between the believer and Christ. There are no other intercessors in between. Remember, Jesus said it himself. He is the only way to God the Father. However, now it seems that Protestant faiths, Protestant denominations and such are, are running back to Rome. They're running back to this form because here is the issue. Say, okay, the Pope says he is the way. And then we have to go through the Pope. But what happens then is the Pope and Catholicism set up all kinds of, of rules and criteria, again, that were extra-biblical. In fact, I believe it is of Catholicism to say that you need more than the Bible. You need the magisterium and the traditions of the church. In other words, whatever they have invented for you, you better follow. And uh, that is not true at all. But this is what's happening today in Protestantism, too. And this is what we are seeing. The Lord had shown me. I mean, when we were starting this, this uh, channel, these videos, I'm like, how should I address it? I think most of the people that will hear me are probably from, from Western nations and such, but, you know, I'm in Botswana now. And the Lord just said, share, with, share what you're dealing with. And I do know for a fact, for a long time, for a long time, the churches have been leading people to themselves and not to Christ. I mean, you think about it. I mean, I can remember this even as youth. We would go out uh, canvassing in the neighborhood. What are we doing? We are inviting people to church. We're not inviting people to Christ. We're not talking to them about their sins or anything like that. Now, I know this is difficult. If your church was actually a very Bible-based, you know, Bible-promoting church, it might not be too bad. But again, how do you know that person is going to live to get to church? And they don't really need to go to church. They need to come to Christ. And uh, I'm sure the, the thief on the cross next to Jesus was very glad that he was, he was next to Jesus and didn't have to be in attendance somewhere else. And so this is the issue that today I am seeing. And that is there are some very heavy-handed Protestant churches that are telling people more or less, and, and they believe it. Their whole Christianity revolves around service to the organization of church. Now, we've talked about this before, and I think most people know it by common sense. But when the Bible talks about church, it is not talking 
about a building. It is not talking about an organization. It is the body of Christ. And it's very clear from Scripture, this is what was arrived at by translation to understand. Those that were called out from the world were the church. Okay, but of course we will refer to buildings as churches. What church do you go to and such? But let's not get confused with this. All right, because the church that Jesus has built is a spiritual entity, and I want to get, want to get into some of that also. One of the problems that we're going to face here, I just want to look at this before going further. Okay, when we're running back to Rome, and the Pope or the church, Protestant churches also, you know, I'm telling the truth here, uh, they are going back, and then they, they establish all of these rules, regulations, programs, things that need to be done in order to, you know, a lot of times it's tithe. You know, you better give your tithe. Oh, you're going to give money? You better give it into the church first. Don't you do anything else unless you give it into the church first. Things like that. Money is the easy one to come up with. But they're always talking about church first. In other words, who are you to minister to your neighbor? Hmm? No, you got to go through the church first. And that happens all over the place today. But here's the danger, people. The book of Galatians was written to a group of Christians who were falling back into a works-based religion. And they were being warned about it. There was no firm conclusion that they were totally lost. And they certainly would have been able to turn back. But God was warning them through Paul. And that's the problem. Because when we do this, we start basing our faith on works. And these are works we have done for the organization of church and not because we are the church of Christ. So let's, let me read this from Galatians 2, 16 to 18. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified because just one infraction, you're guilty of all. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Now I want to explain that. How are we found sinners? This is what I said. If we are living by the law, that means we have to be perfect in everything we do, and nobody is, nobody can be. So in other words, we're trying to be ministers of Christ, but we're actually performing the works of the law. We're trying to live that way. That's the fruit of our labor, and it doesn't work. That's what he means if, if we ourselves are also found sinners. Is Christ the minister of sin? No. And so that's why we, we are saved through faith by the grace of God. And it says, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So we really ought to strive hard not to uh, build again the things that we have destroyed. But I only want to remind you again, the biblical church is not building or buildings or organizations. We can see this from the word. There are four times in the New Testament where it talks about the church in someone's house. I'll just read one of them to you. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. That's Romans 16, verses uh, 3 and 5a. It's all part of the same salutation. So, did uh, Priscilla and, Aqu and Aquila have a huge building with a steeple inside of their house? And it also, at different places, of course, it says, you know, greet the house. Greet the church in the house. So, are you going to walk in through the doors of their house and greet the inner church, this building of bricks? That doesn't make sense. I know I'm being ridiculous. But what I'm pointing out to you is the church in their house were the groups of believers that worshiped there. Simply put, and we know this, and we remember this. Again, I remind you what we have already said. As God has said, now that we have the Holy Spirit, we are the temple of the living God. So we're not looking to buildings made with hands. I would mention also from John 4, 21 to 24, we see where Jesus is saying we will not be worshiping. He said, this is talking to the woman at the well in Samaria. He said, you will not be worshiping in Jerusalem or on this mountain. 
Those believers must worship in spirit and in truth. In other words, he's looking for the inner person. He's not looking for the building. Those are those organizations are of no value to him. And I would only remind you of this. Again, I have these scriptures listed in the description. And that is from the building of the original temple, which a lot of people would go back to and say, well, look, you know, we, we, there was a temple back here and God really blessed it. But you know what was said? It said that the most high dwells not in buildings made with hands. In a number of places, it says that the, that the house of God, it was a house to the name of the Lord, not the house of God, not the house of the Lord, the house to the name of the Lord, because the heaven of heavens could not contain him. And then it also says afterward, it says how blessed it will be. But it says after that, if you turn away, if these people turn away, I will cast this house from my sight. God wants nothing to do with it. He is looking for the hearts of people. He is looking for those that are contrite in spirit. As I even finish up with this, again, with this mention, uh, with this mention, uh, brief verses that I like so much from Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things have mine hand made and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. I have warned about churches because some feel like church attendance is such a big thing, but it's very easy to get caught up in the form religion that churches offer. It is about what they teach scripturally, sure, but you end up going to church and you believe in them. It's like they are the Holy Spirit. Like I think I had said before in terms of offerings, you know, when I was changed, when I was looking at what scripture wanted, I was just throwing things in the offering plate. I wasn't praying to God, what do you want me to do with this money? I just automatically threw it to the church as if the church was a mediator, as if the church was an intercessor like the Holy Spirit. I never asked the Lord. I automatically gave it to the organization. And so I just say that this was wrong. It, it isn't wrong to support a preacher. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm saying we have an accountability directly with God. And again, as I remember, our friends that live uh, next to us, they had a little board meeting here after church one Sunday. And, and I remember this. I think I mentioned it in some other video. You know what they were, one of the things they were talking about at, board, at the board meeting? They were talking about buying the pastor a glass pulpit. He has a beautiful wood pulpit, but they went to buy him a glass pulpit, which was like almost 7,000 pula, which is, you know, close to $700 American, maybe not quite that much. Why are they doing this? How is the gospel being spread? Of course, here, everyone that enters in through the walls of the church, the church building is considered to be saved. It's just really a terrible, terrible thing. But nonetheless, I'm just saying, please, please. Your relationship with God is precious. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Seek him in everything, everything to honor him. If you love him, honor him. And when you're looking at the activities of your organized church, please look through the lens of the Holy Spirit and the word of God. I give this to you as a caution, but remember the tendency we've seen in these days is that the churches are running back to Rome and they're focusing on works and not on grace. May God bless this message to your edification. Have a good day.